What's up everybody, my name is Ryan and in this video I'm going to share how I permanently fix my bad posture. And by the end of this video, you will know how to do the same. Let's get started. So growing up, I was always one of the tallest kids, but I also had the worst posture. I'd only really notice it if somebody else pointed it out or if I caught myself in the mirror. In which case, I'd simply adjust my posture until it looked better and then go about my day. I tried not to spend too much time thinking about it. But my noticeable slouch only continued to get worse as I aged until I finally decided to address it a few years ago. And I am so glad I did. At first, I tried a simple approach. If I recognized I was slouching, I would pull my shoulders back and down, bring out my chest, and tighten my core. And while this technique worked well when sitting or standing, I often found myself quickly slipping back into poor posture, especially when walking or running. I looked into products you wear that pull your shoulders back and force you into good posture, but these felt more like a temporary fix, if anything. What I truly wanted was a natural, long-term solution. I realized, however, I was looking for a solution before I even understood the problem. Why did I have bad posture to begin with? When I was looking for the answer, I focused on my back, shoulders, and neck because that's where my poor posture showed. But my research quickly revealed that what was happening with my upper body was a result of what was going on with my mid and lower body. To truly understand why I had bad posture, I had to look down, all the way to my feet. For as long as I can remember, I always walked and ran heel to toe. This means that with every stride, my heel would touch the ground first and my toes would touch last. I noticed that when I walked this way, it was difficult for me to maintain proper posture with my shoulders back and down. It felt like walking heel to toe just kind of encouraged me to slouch over. It also meant that I was absorbing the impact force through the bone of my heel. And this just didn't make sense to me because when I looked at the anatomy of the foot, it seems like it should be the arch that absorbs impact, not the heel bone. When we jump up and down, for example, we use the arches of our feet as well as our leg muscles to absorb the landing force. We don't land on our heel bones and expect our skeleton and joints to absorb the impact. So why land on our heel bones when walking? Is there a connection between how we walk and our posture? This question led me to the barefoot method of walking which involves landing on the pinky toe edge of the foot and rolling onto the ball. The heel only briefly touches the ground right before the foot pushes off again for the next stride. This method of walking seemed very natural to me as it appeared to be using the arch of the foot as intended. I was further sold on the barefoot method because it's how the body naturally adapts to running without shoes on or running while barefoot especially on hard surfaces. If you tried running barefoot on concrete, but you use the heel to toe method, for example, it would be very painful as you would be landing on the bone of the heel. In response to this pain, your body would automatically adjust to running with the barefoot method in order to disperse the impact force through the arches of the feet, as well as the muscles in the feet and legs. Now, to be clear, the barefoot method of walking doesn't require you to walk around without shoes on. Most people that walk and run using the barefoot method wear minimalist or barefoot style shoes that are designed to help you walk as if you were barefoot. They don't have any heel cushioning or support like regular running shoes. Instead, they have a thin uniform sole whose sole purpose is to protect the bottom of your feet from sharp objects like glass or rocks. And unlike regular shoes that cram your toes into a tiny toe box, these barefoot style shoes have a much wider toe box that allows your toes to spread out and feel the ground beneath you, providing better grip, balance, and stability. This pair even has individual slots for your toes. And it turns out this barefoot method is not only used by the world's top performing runners, it's also super common amongst children. Children almost always walk and run using the barefoot method and usually prefer to be completely barefoot while doing so. 
It's not until we grow older and start wearing modern shoes do we even begin to consider walking differently. Because modern shoes are what makes the heel to toe method even possible. Like I said before, running without shoes using the heel to toe method is very painful because you land directly on the heel bone. But modern running shoes help combat this by having this large cushion at the heel. This cushioning blocks the pain signals you normally get running heel to toe, which is how people are even able to run like this. But it's also why a lot of these runners get injuries such as runner's knee. After learning all this, I decided to transition to the barefoot method. I hoped that it would be able to help me maintain proper posture while walking and eventually running. And for the first couple months, I had to consciously think of every step I took because I was essentially relearning how to walk. I quickly realized that I needed to purchase new minimalist style shoes as trying to walk with the barefoot method in my older shoes just felt uncomfortable. And pretty soon, walking heel to toe just felt weird. When I tried it, I could feel the impact force traveling up the bones of my legs. But when I walked with the barefoot method, it was so satisfying to feel the muscles in my feet, legs, and back actively engaged as I moved. The adjustment period actually took a few months, but it was well worth it. I noticed huge improvements in my overall posture, and it actually felt like the barefoot method encouraged me to walk with proper upright posture. Most importantly, it was that natural long-term solution I was looking for. Now, whenever I catch myself in the mirror, it feels great to see a handsome man with proper posture looking back at me. But I'm not perfect and I don't have perfect posture all the time. I still have to consciously remind myself to correct my posture, especially when sitting down. I also do other things to help with my posture as well, such as sitting in a saddle stool, using a standing desk, and doing strength training exercises. But of all the strategies I use, walking and running with the barefoot method has by far been the most beneficial. And I hope it's able to help you with your posture as well. And if you are planning on transitioning to the barefoot method, just remember to take it slow, as it can take a long time for your body to adjust. And if you're planning on running with the barefoot method, I definitely recommend checking out a website I'll put in the description called Run Forefoot. I don't have any affiliation with this website, but it has helped me a lot in my own running journey. In fact, I did use the barefoot method of running to run my first ever 10K at the end of last year, which you can check out in this video up here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I make new videos about self-improvement every single week. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Peace. Oh, I, I, I keep touching my boobs in this video, like doing the posture. <laughs>